Okay, y'all, we back with The Come Up Miami, Season 1, Episode 4. See, the episodes keep confusing me because it keeps showing the episode before the season, so I'll be wanting to say Season 4, Episode 1, but it's Season 1, Episode 4. So this is where the fight, at. they finally throw some hands, honey, so let's go on here and get to it. Uh... I know the hell, y'all. It's been raining all day. I door dashed in the midst of a flash flood running nearly darn going to crash my car as a result. I'll tell y'all all about that during the door dash chronicles. And also, if y'all haven't noticed, they my teeth are 90% done. Uh, this one right here uh, is a temporary porcelain crown. So, to give y'all an idea of what my porcelain crown is going to look like because y'all remember it used to be a a huge cavity hole right there so this is what it's looking like right now so honey we, we've come a long way in the teeth department honey last thing on the list is to get them realigned but honey that, that'll be next year but let's get into the darn gone review so i've already watched it but I don't take down the notes because I don't have time because <laughs> of my very busy schedule. So I got to watch it over and zip through for y'all. So and give y'all my thoughts from there. Okay, so now you got Jovia and Dargon Bam, ba Bam Bam, honey, in the car talking cash shit about the rest of the crew, honey. Then you got that darn gone handsome Sean going over his stuff, honey. Okay, some real Bam's upbringing. And I don't know what's going on with Spectrum, but and uh, granted, you know it. You know it's it's storming, so. Okay, so Javier and Jamal are meeting up. Okay, so basically in this scene, Javier had some choice words for Jamal about whatever he said about him being a sugar. And it, it, this is the thing I don't get. This is like the darn going second time at this point where something is coming up off camera. Actually, the third time, because Joe is meeting up with Jamal about a sugar daddy comment or some shit that did not get take, put on camera. Then you had Miles who felt some type of way about Jamal's response to the only cam thing, but we didn't see that on camera. Then you got Darn going, uh, Sean touching Bam's face that we didn't. Now, I believe that one was real because of the reactions of what happened next and both of them. You know, everybody seemed to confirm that. So, but there's a lot of shit that just keep happening off camera where it's like, are we now putting 20 on 10 on certain situations to try to keep a storyline going to try to keep the shit spicy? Because that's, that's what I'm about seeing at this point. It's like, and I understand that the camera has to edit certain stuff out, but you ain't editing out no darn on key parts of no darn on drama. And conveniently, the main thing that led up to said drama, it, 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 you can't darn on furnish the camera receipts. Everything is conveniently off camera. I'm starting to notice a trend with this. But let's move on. But they had that conversation. Jamal explains his position on it, laughs it all. And everything seems cool from there, or so we thought, honey. Looks like we got a hair commercial for Miss Hayes Mixture LLC. Honey, I done tried so much for this darn on here. Honey, I'm trying to vitalize the easy route. I, I'm just going to go ahead and just get the darn on surgery next year. Cut all this off 
and let them take the skin graft and put it right on up and through here. I ain't trying nothing else, but honey, shout out to the to the hair commercial, honey. Now we back with the come up Miami. Okay, Jamal and Sean sits down and have their kiki. Honey, you do have a drinking problem. Like, how in the world you get so drunk that you don't even remember meeting entire people? Like, that that's crazy. Honey, I don't know why y'all sugar baby shaming and darn gone, uh, Sean, isn't you doing OnlyFans as well? And don't you darn gone do darn gone sexual stories on your YouTube channel? Like, honey, let, let, let's not shame the girls, honey. Now you got these four in the car. You got Prince, Miles Spears, Javon, and Bam Bam, honey, with Bam driving the car. Honey, darn gone, Miles looks so uncomfortable back there. His ass was six feet tall, and this darn gone car, oh, Lord. Mm. I would have just had to drive behind them, honey. It would have. It, it should have just been him and Prince in a whole nother car, honey, because that that he looks so uncomfortable. Legs just up to his darn gone neck, and then you got Jamal and Sean in a whole nother car. So both of them driving in the cars. And we thinking that, and I understand that y'all ain't got no lo uh, uh, love and hip hop type money. I understand y'all ain't got no real housewives of Atlanta type money. But are we really going to the bouncy house? <laughs> I'm like, are we 17? But now granted that some of y'all do look like y'all 17. Honey, Sean look like he's 19. Honey, that Prince look like he's like 14, 15 years old. Just very youthful in the face, honey. But still, Honey, y'all all about around my age. Are we literally having darn on stage meetups at the darn on bouncy house and play? Now, I ain't saying grown folks can't play dodgeball and shit. But, honey, this was giving me so much preteen vibes of them darn on meeting up at the darn on bouncy house and just hopping and kiki. Like, who, who really doing that at pushing 30? And then I know Jamal said he just celebrated his, what, 30th birthday. Okay, but do y'all, honey. To my people in Florida, is this what y'all really do in y'all third? Once again, I'm not shaming. I'm not shaming. I just thought it was a little bit out of character. Even though some of y'all do look like y'all in character. Because like I said, I keep looking at this prince. And it, it, he, he, I'm like, oh my goodness. He keeps giving me 14-year-old vibes, honey. Bam Bam is not having it with this filming. He's saying, fuck it. <laughs> I'm staying over here in the damn cut. I done gave y'all my time. It is what the uh, F it is. So far, I didn't blame him from this. It's like, honey, I ain't about to change up and key key for the sake of darn gone camera time. You know we ain't resolved the issue the first time. I don't know what makes you think I'm about to darn gone. A smile in your face. Plotting your dismay. The backstabbers. Woo! The backstabbers. Honey, he said, uh-uh. I'm going to darn gone tell you that I'm still on this hateration. I'm on this hateration, toleration, and it's destiny. Honey, they playing with the other boys and stuff with this dodgeball and stuff.
Okay, now they finally get down to the sit down, honey. Where did you go away to, honey? Then how you find what happened and you don't even know what darn gonna transpire? Number one, you is the one that initiated the shit. You don't get to say you fine as it. See, that would have pissed me off too. It's like, bitch, the apology ain't for you. you how you going to darn gonna say you fine as if I did something in the wrong? Honey, that would have rubbed me the wrong way too. Now, I wouldn't have gone off the handle and been extra like bam, bam, honey. A uh, matter of fact, my my mindset is more like darn on Miles Spears over here. Miles Spears, honey, Miles' commentary was everything on this one. I can't stand the excuse either, ban uh, uh, Miles. Blame it on the a a a a Blame it on the a a a a a a girl. Exactly, darn gone mouse. Shouldn't the darn gone touch them at all. Once again, you said out your own damn mouth, you don't remember shit. Now you talking about, uh, now you hear, uh, hear say, she say, honey. Now this is where Bam lost me, honey. <laughs> now Bam, girl. You done lost me with this shit. Now I was with you up until this part. Now I was up with you to this part. Like, girl, you basically saying now you have an issue with Jamal because Jamal should have been pissed off at you when you was making comments about Sean. So first, now you're trying to say that Sean is a fake friend. I mean, Jamal is a fake friend to Sean. And that you was upset that he was kiki but there is different laughters. Like, he wasn't laughing with the conversation at the spits of Sean. He was laughing basically to keep the peace and be like, oh, <laughs> you know, to be neutral to the situation. Even though we know that his loyalty is lying with Sean or whatever. So now you trying to darn on insinuate that he's a flip flopper, which Sean then, you know, uh, mentions that he's not and, uh, and has held darn on uh, Sean account. This is very much giving me Real Housewives Potomac tease that Karen is in, except on a more darn on childish level, honey, between these darn on girls, honey. Like, this, this is just a hot mess. And then Bam turns around and contradicts himself with darn on, but let, let me get into it. This recording. We're going to get to that part in a moment. But first he was mad that... He, first he tried to paint the narrative that he was flip-flopping on Sean. Then you turn around and you insinuated that you have a problem with him being neutral in 
uh, uh, about the situation? Like, which one is it? Is he too neutral for you? Or is he, you know, flip-flopping on Sean? Or then you say, oh, well, we know where you, who you are going to try to uh, side with. You ain't neutral on it. Well, number one, they, are, they, they was friends before this shit from what I'm gathering. And you, they, they just getting to know you. So, of course, he knows Sean a little bit better. But in light of this situation, honey, he did best as he could to darn going to remain neutral as possible to the situation. You darn going first darn going to try to go at it that, you know, he was flip-flopping on Sean. Then when that, you know, you didn't get a, your rise out of that, uh, Sean didn't darn going to take the bait on that shit. Now you trying to... uh say that now he's in the wrong for darn on taking up for Sean. I mean, for being on Sean's team. So you just flipped your narrative a whole 180 within five minutes. Now, of course, it could have been a lot longer in their time. You know how editing works and short stuff down. But for what we see, honey, you just flipped up your whole narrative within the point of this conversation, how long it took, honey. Here he go with this scripted shit. Like I said, some of this shit just seems too scripted, honey. Now, now, now come up, Miami. Here's my problems that I got with y'all, honey. Honey, ba bam, bam, with this darn going. Every time he got to keep mentioning that, he don't hang out with the gay. Okay, we done got it the first few times, bitch. Okay. I mean, and then the, it sounds so reductive because he's repeating everything verbatim. It's not like it's just coming off natural. Uh, like his words are almost coming off like a damn script. That's why I say some of this is darn gone. Seems like they trying to fish for a storyline from the darn going altercations. Uh, the, the starting point of the altercations are all conveniently off camera for the exception of darn going Sean touching the face, which we believe that is real, but everything else from darn going Jamal's comments about the sugar daddy to darn on Jamal's comments about darn on Miles Spears with the ASMR. Honey, this seems like y'all trying to fish the darn on create teams, honey. And y'all want Bam Bam to be the Kenya Moore of the show. And y'all want Jamal to be the Nene Leaks. Because it seems like that y'all painting a picture of him being the Nene Leaks of the show. Okay, y'all. I lost my train of thought. I thought somebody was at my door, honey. Uh but yeah, it seems like they trying to paint Bam Bam as the Nene. I mean, of the uh, Bam Bam as the King of More of the show, and Jamal as the uh, Nene of the show. Bambi, you, uh, Bam, I, Bam, I'm sorry, Bambi. His name is so similar to yours, but Bam Bam, honey, you, you, you just put 20 on 10 with Jamal, honey. And then Jamal is trying to converse with him amicably. Ain't raising his tone. He, he, he's just going unnecessarily hood for no reason. And then here comes the thing with the cash app comment. Honey, if your dog on cash app would have rung off 20 times within two minutes with me present, I would have been curious to be knowing like, what, what girl, what you doing? Go on, put a sister on game. Put a, put a sister on game. Honey, I would have darn gone said it like that. It wasn't, I wouldn't assume that it was automatic strip of money, honey. You could have been on your entrepreneur grind, honey. You you could be selling some lips and potions. You know, you could be selling some potions and shit. You could darn gone have, it could have been a myriad of things of why your cash out was going off. You the one took it to the low vibration, honey. But he said, he's insinuating that Jamal meant it in the derogatory manner. So now, and once again, the, the start of this conversation happened off camera. So, like I said, it, it, it just seems, it, it just screams darn on scriptedness to me in regards to some of this shit. But now he's darn on upset about the dark. I mean, either this shit's heavily scripted or he's just this darn on dipsy and immature. 
And like I said, I, I was rooting for you. In my Tyra Banks voice, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting. Well, we might have all not been rooting for you, but bitch, I was rooting for you, damn it. Well, girl, I would have been wondering what uh, what you do out, cause we 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 got introduced to you as a stripper. Usually, your money is thrown to you up front. Now you saying that people is uh, giving you money after the fact when you're not on the pole, when you're not in front of them. So that would have made me curious. Of which are are you on some mouse spears too? Are you on the only cam and your only? And once again, we ain't judging, cause Lord knows, honey, you you look like you can give some interesting content too. It's, we, we ain't judging over here. But, honey, that would have made me curious just the darn on ass. And, you know, little do you know, I might have darn on sent the coin or something. I, you, you know I love supporting my darn on fellow folks. Y'all know I support my Bobby Lights and my Cash Dineros and my Raheem Shabazzes of the world, my King Fames of the world. Honey, I'm subscribed to quite a plenty of people on OnlyFans, honey. If Miles Spears has something, matter of fact, he does have only cam. I might darn gone throw a dollar to that way, honey. I love supporting my darn gone people and they darn gone adult entertainment endeavors. So if I would have asked, honey, it would have been for my darn gone, hell, yeah, let, me, let me go ahead and help y'all now. But see, you blocking your darn, well, I'm not saying Jamal would darn gone bless you, honey, y'all. But, honey, you don't never know. He might have darn gone wanted to darn gone be curious and send you a blessing through your cash app as well if you do that in your spare time. Because I ain't never heard of a darn gone stripper getting paid cash app, first of all, unless they doing something else. Or, you know, and when I mean something else, <laughs> you know, or you could be on the camera. But like I said, hell, you got Miles Spears saying he's the only cam model and nobody's tripping off of that. So... Like I said, it would have been interesting to find out. Well, well, I ain't never heard of a stripper getting darn gone cash app donations outside of darn gone the club, but I digress. Like I said, this storyline seems so darn gone far-fetched. Well, girl, ain't everybody not... Once again, you the one darn gone having a 20, 30, some darn gone cash apps for $100 here, $200 there. Uh, I, I seen what they rolled up in and we seen what you rolled up in. So, honey, you want to talk about somebody uh, uh, motherfucking guns. Do you got five on it? Do you got five? Do you got five on it? Honey, I just got my teeth darn gone together and it's it's kicking my ass. I just had to pay $121 today out of pocket. Had to pay $145 on the 19th for this shit. And my my shit ain't nowhere near as bright and shining, 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 shining. Yay. All this winning. But honey, I can't get no winning B1 shade. This is shade A3, baby. This is shade A3. Honey, I don't got it like that right now where I can get, get B1 veneers for 20 grand, honey. Like I said, while you want to talk about people's darn gone gums and stuff, see, it wasn't a pain for me to be in Jamal place. I would have kind of got him together. We're like, uh, well, do you got five on it? Do you got five? Do you got five on it? Because, honey, I know what it's like with these dental bills. It's kicking my darn gum on high left and right. But since you clearly got the money, go get the money, go get the money. Woo! Go get the money, go get the money. Honey, since you got the darn gone money, you know, put a sister up on game, baby. Or darn gone, uh, run me one fourth of your nightly earnings. Since you got it like that. Oh, I got it like that. I got it. Since you got it like that, sweetheart, honey, darn gone bless my cash app. How about that? And I, I maybe I'll get my teeth one, because number one, I don't like the that super bright teeth. See, I would never go for a B1 because 
your darn on teeth don't supposed to be whiter than the um the outer side of your eyes. So with the way that my eyes are, honey, I would have went with a B2 in my personal opinion, honey. The B2 comes off way more natural and it's not that super uh falsely bright. Some people can pull off that look, but I feel like on me, it would make me look like I got dentures in my mouth because it's, it's super unrealistic. And then the shape, I, I was still like somewhat of an unfl... You know, but then again... I probably have settled for the universal shape or whatever, but it's like I at least got to have a natural tone, a more natural tone. And that and most people have my shade of teeth. Once again, I got a shade A3. That that's what a majority of people in America actually have. Um, but like I said, the most brightest smile that usually comes off universally naturally is a B2. I know I just went on a whole tooth tangent, but since he talking about people's gums and stuff, and I just got my shit worked on today, that that just made me go in a whole soapbox of my own damn self, honey. Don't worry, Jamal, I got your back. Because I know how hard it is, it, it is out here with these dental bills, baby. Jamal, I feel the same way. What? Jamal, just just relish it, honey. Just relish that they trying to make you the Nene -nee Leaks of the damn show, honey. You you must got some sort of darn on star power. They trying to make you the darn on head honcho, the girl, well the co-head honcho. Is darn on bam bam and you, honey. I would have said the same thing. Go get your money, honey. Go and get your money, honey. Go on. Go. <laughs> honey, if I wasn't afraid of a copyright strike for Miss Nene, honey, I would have darn gone put in darn gone the honey music real quick. Shauna, I'm, I'm about with you right there. It's like, honey, the, the main issue started with Sean and you. Now, all of a sudden, you darn gone going back and forth. With darn on Jamal, Jamal over some petty shit, over a cash app statement, and him darn on not flip flopping on darn on Sean, and then you try to flip the narrative again and say, "Well, you too neutral." Once again, I need them to get these mics together, honey. Put the mic, put the darn on mics on y'all backs instead of the sides, so we stop hearing all this feedback, honey. <laughs> I guess Prince is the darn on Candy Birds of the show. He ain't put that pizza down yet, honey. Honey, everybody else just a looking and honey darn on Prince. Instead of eating, honey. So, okay, Bam Bam is the darn on Kenya Moore. Bam Bam is the Kenya Moore. Jamal is the darn on Nene Leaks. And Prince is the darn on uh, Candy of the show. We're going to give Miles Cynthia Bailey, you know, he gives good looks and fashions. And I mean that in a good way because his looks and fashions actually comes with legitimate chicks. You know, some people just have looks and fashions and that's about it. But honey, his looks and fashions actually comes with a lucrative career, honey. Almost like Cynthia Bailey, honey. So Miles Spears is the Cynthia Bailey of the show. You know, sophisticated, elegant reads, honey. Uh, Joville, honey, we're going to... Uh, we're going to give you charade, honey. And you give good gowns and fashions in your own light, too, but not like, you know, Miles, honey. Take that however you want to. Miles gives the fashions amongst other... You, you gives the fashions thus far. That's about it. Oh, so now, bam, you out of order. You out of order. 
See, you you threw that blow, and Darngon, it wasn't even mutual because uh, Darngon Sean wasn't even facing you. It wasn't even like both of y'all was standing up and about to engage in mutual combat. You you Darngon clocked him off guard. And honey, uh, congrats to Darngon Sean jumping up with the creep reflexes, honey. Sean didn't even uh, get it, give a half a second and started fighting back. Honey, I give Sean that. But yeah, bam, you in the you 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 in the fucking wrong, girl. You literally jumped your darn on high, damn near white ass over to hit darn on shine in the face. Like you couldn't go back and forth. Like okay, we understand you from the hood, you from Miami, and all this motherfucking bullshit. But that was that that was some darn on sneak shit. Since you want to talk about hood, because guess what, bitch, I'm from the hood too. And what you did was an old sneak shit. You didn't darn gonna tell him to get up and meet you outside. You didn't brace him for the ass whooping. You didn't darn gonna walk around there and let it be known that you about to darn gonna molly wop his ass. You did some punk shit. Since you want to talk about darn gonna you. And then this is what gets me with Bam's ass. You keep talking about you ain't one of the girls. Reminds me of another motherfucker butcher who, who thinks he ain't one of the girls. But you are the most feminine flamboyant thing on the damn table. And uh, let me tell you this. Feminine and flamboyancy are two different things. You given the ultimate flamboyancy teeth. Because Miles is the most feminine, but he's actually what you claim that you are in real life. Quiet, reserved, ultimately to himself and all this, but ultimately he's still cordial and can respond to other people. You is just completely hostile. You not going to flip down Jamal on some petty shit. You claiming to be hood and all this, but you had to sneak punch darn on Jamal to get your head in. And you doing all this loudness and interacting that you ain't with the girls and all this, but trying to form an alliance with the girls. You the loudest one in the car, Kiki and the carrying on. But all the, the things that you claim that you don't like about the girls, you exude the damn most, honey. Self-loathing much? And like I said, I just this is just me giving my honesty to commentary, honey. From a legitimate darn gone hood bitch, honey. You need to get your act together. Like, girl, bye. But now the fight's breaking out, hun. Oh, Lord. Poor Miles almost darn gonna fell down. Sean, I don't blame you, honey. Get to his motherfucking ass. Honey, they can do... Why is... Oh, no, they need to get their editing skills together, honey. We could have did without all the Chuck E. Cheese, like, wait, 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 wait. But speaking of Chuck E. Cheese, honey, we're about to get to the ultimate Chuck E. Cheese moment in a moment. I'm going to pause it at a certain point and just show y'all the still shot. Hold on. Let me take this off the thing real quick, y'all. So y'all can see this shit real quick. Hold on. Not, not here. Y'all see this right here. Honey, he is the Dargon candy of the damn show. <laughs> what in the world honey the fight is going on and he's over there in the in the cut darn on leg all cocked up and it still eating girl are you <laughs> I'm like girl now what Honey, if, if Chuck E. Cheese wasn't going out of business, honey, you could be the human spokesperson for Chuck E. Cheese because it's like, y'all at this darn on childhood establishment giving me very much Chuck E. Cheese vibes. Bitch, you look like you know older than 14. It's almost like, honey, I might would have darn gone trying to holler at you if I was 13 years younger because just looking at you now makes me like, uh-uh. 
Hell, you might be around my age, but honey, you look too damn youthful, honey. And this is coming from somebody who looks like I'm only 20, 21. But bitch, you look like you 13, 14. <laughs> but honey, this fight breaks down, right? And he's still back there, lead cocked up, eating the damn pizza. But you know the inner fat, the inner darn gonna form a fat bitch in me would have been like the same thing. So if I would have did one better, honey, I would have. Honey, I would have grabbed the whole pizza plate, honey. Y'all ain't about to be throwing no good darn on food. Bitch, I grew up on food stamps and from the deep south, honey. What we will not do, honey, y'all can throw all the hands that y'all want to. Uh, 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 y'all done eating? Okay, this unfinished pizza, honey, I would have kindly grabbed it and would have went to the left, to the left. Everything go on with the Thomas to the left. In that cloud, Honey, I would have darn gone push myself right on out the door. With the damn pizza. Uh-uh. We ain't letting good food go to waste. <laughs> but honey, that shit just stood out to me right there, honey. Honey, Prince, you are the doggone Candy Burris of the... Now, I don't know if you got Candy Burris money. I don't know if you the richest one out in the bunch, honey. It look like Bam Bam might be the one that got the funds out of all the girls, baby. But, honey, you definitely have doggone... Um, Prince, I mean, uh, Candy's darn gonna eat in Tennessee, honey. And on that note, that's darn gonna episode one of, I mean, season one, episode four of darn gonna come up Miami. Y'all tell me y'all thoughts on this. I know I'm late. I'm still a couple episodes behind. And then it's, it doesn't help that a couple other shows that came on. And shout out to, you know, Markel, who is the, uh, executive producer and creator of Lovers. Some show that's also on here as well, Lovers and Friends. Uh, he offered a suggestion for me to start doing those. To my folks, what, uh, what do y'all think, uh, thoughts on that? Do y'all, do y'all watch Lovers and Friends? If so, um, uh, do y'all want me to pick up that show as well? Now I'm going to watch it and see, but I, it, it ultimately, this, the decision is up to y'all. Do y'all want me to pick up that show as well? Now, one of the executive producers actually asked me. So I'm going to leave it up to y'all. To You know, we'll see if we're going to pick that one up. And then, of course, now I got to watch Chasing um, A Land of the Night. I didn't think it came on last night because of, you know, the fact that it's Veterans Day. And then, of course, I couldn't have did it that night anyways because y'all know I don't do my reviews right afterwards. And then I was out door dashing, honey. So... That wouldn't have worked. So, I'm going to watch it tonight. And that video will be uploaded tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. No, it will be uploaded uh, Saturday. I'm recording it tomorrow, but it will be uploaded on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Um, if not that night at 9.30, because I'm going, I'm doing another three videos in one day. Y'all know when I'm backed up, my schedule is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then I upload the third video, 9.30 um, Eastern Time. So if it does get uploaded Friday, it will be at 9.30. If not, it will be Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. So that is it, y'all. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell me if y'all want me to pick up Lovers and Friends um, from the Gemini Films franchise of shows. And that's it. I will see y'all soon with more videos. Mwah.